Pushcraft 412 and today I want to talk about guns. In particular when it comes to SHTF guns and what you want to use for home defense. Now you can argue all day long about which gun is the best, which caliber is the best. You know you can, you can literally argue all day long about that. Everybody has their own opinions. So you have to understand this video here is, you know, once again this is geared toward more towards the beginner who's looking to get into guns, looking for home defense or prepping. And just starting out, um, you know, if you have experience, you know what you want. You know, you don't need to leave comments about why the Glock is better and the AR-15 is better. I don't, you know, it's it's just not productive. This is just kind of beginner information here, so be gentle with the comments, guys. Well, what I want to get into, now that we've kind of said that, is let's talk about what your purpose is for guns. You know, if you're using them for target practice or hunting or self-defense, you know, you each gun is going to have a specific need. You know, a bolt-action gun with a scope is very different from a semi-auto with the iron sights. Completely different story. So with that kind of said, I'm gearing this towards home defense. You're in your home. You know, you know what hits the fan. There's a hundred guys outside your house looking to take your guns, your food, your water, and harm your family. You have to defend your home. How are you going to do that? Well, first you want to look at is range. You want a gun that's going to give you a good range. So in the middle here, we have the M44, the Russian Mosin Nagat 7.62x54 rimmed. This bolt action rifle right here. And these are World War II. You can get them at gun shows from around 70 to maybe you know, $150, depending on which model. They also make an M38 and an M, uh, oh, what is it, the uh, 30, you know, there's, there's a bunch of different models. And they are different. This one is a carbine. It's a shorter version meant for urban combat. I bought this one in particular because it is a shorter version. It is something a little more portable, something you can carry around with you. Some of the other versions are very long and almost kind of unwieldy. They're so long. But I wanted this short, compact. I think I actually paid 79 bucks for that uh, about four or five years ago at a gun show. Loved the gun. Probably put 500 rounds through it. Very accurate at 100 yards, even with iron sights. Uh, you can hit a bowling pin, you know, four out of five times at 100 yards. As is, no work. Great rifles. No complaints. So you have that. You have cheap military surplus ammo. Readily available, you can buy it in the tin, 400 rounds for 80 bucks. You can create quite a stockpile with this gun in a hurry. And the best part about it is the psychological aspect. Number one, it's got the fixed bayonet, which you know gives a little bit of a scare knowing that even if you do miss the bullets, you're going to have to deal with the bayonet. But this gun, if you look this up, shoots a fireball that's like three feet long when you shoot it. Now the psychological effect, this is a cannon. It is a loud gun, comparable to a 308. the bullet is. You shoot this, you have a huge fireball coming out the end. That's scary, it's intimidating. It may scare people off. The intimidation factor is part of your home defense. You want a gun that's going to intimidate people. It makes a big loud bang. It makes a big fireball. An AR-15 may not intimidate people. That little pop from the AR, the 223, may not scare away a crowd of people, but the big roar of that thing very well might. Something to consider when you're picking out your guns. I'm a big fan of military surplus guns, and I do have, I have a lot of guns, and this is just one of them. I like it, and I think it's a great buy for guys getting into it who don't have a ton of money, who just want a nice little gun, you know, to keep in the house, to plank with, and to get familiar with guns and to learn. They're bolt action, they're simple, you know, they're they're foolproof. So you move on from there. This group of 100 people we were talking about before, you know, they shoot you up. You can't fire anymore. You have to retreat to the inside of your house. Now they're in your house. You're doing battle. What do you want? My choice, 12-gauge pump shotgun. Uh, this one here is actually a Mossberg 500. I got it for about 270 bucks. It comes with two barrels. It comes with a regular 
you know, shot barrel, and then it comes with a rifle barrel. And to switch them out, it's actually really easy. You just turn that knob, pull the barrel off, put the new barrel in, tighten the knob up. Very beautiful switch over really quick. Um, I like the 12 gauge because of the variety of ammo. If you are adverse to hurting people, you can load this thing up with birdshot, shoot a couple rounds out, and no one's going to probably get killed unless you shoot point blank. You know, they're going to be very angry at you, but you can use less than lethal force. On the other hand, you can load this thing up with buckshot, and you can turn someone into a human sausage casing. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be messy. Same thing, you can you have a little range with this gun too in that you can put slugs in it, deer slugs in it, and you can shoot 50, 70 yards. Once again, very intimidating. The rack of a shotgun is very intimidating. Everybody knows that noise. Everybody knows how strong a shotgun is. Very intimidating, very good weapon to stick out a window to fend off a crowd of people. You know, because in reality, if it really does hit the fan, you're better off to conserve your ammo and to scare people away through intimidation than you are a gunfight. Because in reality, a gunfight, you only have a 50-50 chance of winning. <laughs> you know, those are not good odds. I would avoid a gunfight at any, any means whatsoever. And intimidation will work. Um, I think another necessity is a 22 semi-auto. You know, you can put a lot of rounds downrange in a hurry. The 22 is not the most lethal of rounds, but any bullet is a good bullet. Any bullet that hits a person could potentially kill them. If you need to defend your home, defend your family, defend your life, you can take a 22 and put hundreds of rounds down in a hurry and not worry about it. Good hunting rifle. Good if you need for self-reliance, for getting your own food, practice, you know. You become a good marksman by becoming good on a 22. You know, end of story, it's a must have in your house if you're gonna be in guns. This is the gun you learn on, this is the gun you practice on to keep sharp. I like a good semi-auto with a scope. You know, you have problems, you can take care of that problem from 75 or 100 yards away. Now not to say you can't do that with any other rifle, but the 22 is good, economical, cheap, and accurate enough where Anyone can use it. Now your last line of defense, absolute last, is the hand cannon. Now this is my Ruger P95 DC. Nice little gun. You know, it's not a Glock. It's not going to be as reliable as a Glock. It's not going to be as beautiful as a Glock. But I've got probably about 2,000 rounds through this. And I haven't had one failure since the break-in period. This this gun did have a, a tough break-in. You know, we had a hard time at first. But after a couple hundred rounds, this thing performed flawlessly. Love the gun. I shoot this probably more than any other gun. Very familiar with it. This is that last-ditch effort. Um, and I understand not every... You can't have pistols everywhere, man. You can't have them in New York, D.C. A lot of places you can't have them. Some places the uh, pistol laws are so prohibitive you just can't get a pistol permit. It's understandable. Don't get illegal guns. Our laws are there for a reason. Follow them. You may not like them, but it's our job as citizens to follow them and to own guns legally, to store them safely, you know, keep them locked, keep the ammo separate, keep the ammo locked. Your guns do not need to fall into the hands of the wrong people. Now, with that said... I just wanted to show you a couple things. I've got a lot more guns, but this right here is a good starter kit for, what was it, 270, 70, 150, and 300. For under a thousand dollars, you can get a pretty good range of weaponry for your home, your home defense, and keeping yourself safe. Not to mention the hunting opportunities that you can get with this. You can hunt bird, small game, large game, you name it. There's a lot of opportunity, a lot of versatility here. And I think when you're just starting out, you should avoid the fancy rifles. Avoid AR-15s and AK-47s. Learn to use a pump shotgun. Learn to use a bolt-action rifle. Learn to use a 22. Learn and be 100% safe. When you know the stuff, then go out, make an informed purchase. Buy those AKs. Buy those ARs. 
you know, when you know what you're doing and you know you're safe with them and you know you can keep them safe in your home. So that's it for now. I might do a couple more follow-up videos on this, but any questions or comments, feel free to leave.